Uh, hello everybody, my name is Joe Carter and I'm going to be doing an unboxing video of uh, my my game uh, Schnell Boats uh, published by Compass Games and uh, this is my designer copy. It is set to be released probably in November or December of this year. So this is, uh, like I said, this is an unboxing video, and I just wanted to show you uh, what the contents are to give everybody an idea of what to expect when you receive your order. So this is the uh, box cover. I thought it turned out very nicely, um, and it's uh, it depicts... Uh, the uh, Schnell boats that had attacked um, the landing, uh, British landing craft that were training off of the coast of southern England uh, in uh, Exercise Tiger. So they made a surprise attack. And the game does uh, include an abstracted rule for this battle. So, anyway, this is a solitaire game, of course, and this is the side of the box and it's the same on both sides you can see that and the top and bottom I thought looked very nice he used a white a white background on that and here's the back cover that it turned out very nicely the uh, if the game was uh, designed of course by myself and then John Grans uh, is the project director, and Bruce uh, Yearin did the the box cover, um, and Brian Miller the box cover uh, design, and Bruce also did all the artwork and tables conversion for the game. So he he did a, most of it actually. So he worked very hard, and then it shows a component list here. And then just a basic background, and this is one of the map examples, and then the map example. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up here and show you. It's a nice heavy box. The compass started using heavier boxes. And here we have two whiteboard markers that are uh, basically dry erase markers, and they're used on some of the laminated mats. And then we have our dice here. We have uh, two, uh, four D10s, and uh, we have a one D4. Looks like a little pyramid, and we have a one uh, D20 and then a one D6. So all of these are used in the game. Maybe some of you have never seen a a D4. It's kind of strange looking, but uh, I felt it was necessary to include it in the game because there are four uh, there are four boats usually in uh, you know during gameplay so they just made it easier here are some uh, nice little plastic ziploc bags that the the counters can be stored in so that was a nice touch that compass included and then here we have the uh, the rule book and I I think it turned out very nicely we have uh, just the basics. The rule book's very thin because most of the rules are integrated. Like we have metals here and stuff. Most of the rules are integrated into uh, the, the tables books. So it's very easy to pick up and start playing. And then here we have like the counter guide that explains uh, each counter when it's used and what uh, where it's used. More counters. And uh, and then we have optional two player rules here. You know, it's very easy to do two players. Very very simple. And then we have some mat setup examples that uh, Bruce Bruce made, which he did a very good job. And just to give you you guys uh, an idea how the mats should look like with the counter setup. And then we have a few more. 
here, and then we have the scans of the counter sheet. And then uh, actually we have, there was some errata that uh, was included from Devil Boats, which was a, I guess it's a nice touch that Compass thought they should include. So that's the, uh, and this is just a basic uh, overview of uh, the game uh, play terms in the game. So, and then that's the rule book. So very thin. And then this is the uh, the S one hundred snowboat uh, tables book, and all the tables are included. And again, I think Bruce did a great job converting these. You can see some nice artwork was included. And uh, you just basically, you can just pick up the game and start playing. There's very little to memorize because you just follow the tables in uh, alphabetical and num numerical order. And then each table tells you, usually tells you where to go next. It's usually in the order, but sometimes you have to skip around. And, um, but most of it's, you know, it's pretty logical. And usually you're directed where to go next. So if you're not directed, that just means you go to the next table in line. So it's very, very simple, actually. There's a lot of content. Don't be uh, intimidated. Um, there's a lot of reading, and the game's very detailed. But like I said, there's very little to memorize, very few rules that you actually have to memorize. It's always right in front of you, which is a very convenient um, and we have the repair times after the, the mission's completed, the patrol. And then we have final scoring. Or, and actually, we have the mission uh, victory points here. And then we have the final scoring here. And uh, so let's, uh, that's, the, that's the S100. And then here we have the Project 5B Trog Fugo. Uh, tables book. This is the second boat that the uh, players can command. This is an experimental turbojet powered boat that never made it uh, into operation with the uh, the Kriegsmarine. So it's the same thing. It's a, a bunch of uh, you know tables. You just simply follow it through, and it gives it actually each boat gives a different play experience. This boat is much more difficult to uh, play because just for various reasons. Um, the, the rough seas make this a very difficult boat to fight with and, and of course the, you know, the English Channel was had bad weather most of the time which meant rough seas. So this hydrofoil boat is going to struggle unless the water is very smooth and you're not going to be able to use the the extra speed that these jet engines give uh, much of the time. So this is probably a much more challenging boat to play with. I wanted to give players two different experiences uh, when they command each type of boat. So I'm hoping that that that's uh, that was accomplished. So. Um, but the rules are basically the same. There, there's uh, there's going to be some different types of damage that these boats can take compared to the S100. So let's go to the next. Okay, let's go to the next thing. This is the uh, the map, the travel zone map, and it, as you can see, it's nice, thick, mounted uh, on a mounted board. And this is the English Channel, of course, and then this is the Cherbourg. Uh, Espo base in uh, based in France, of course, and then you're going to do patrols along the um, the southern British coast, and uh, these are the different travel zones, and we have the squadron boxes for the boats, and we have the sea state, and we could put the medals that are earned uh, down here. So that turned out very nicely. And then here we have the crewman placement maps. There's two of them, and it's just one-sided. This is where we're going to put the counters. This is the S100. 
where we're going to put the counters. It's kind of large. Let me back up here. And um, you're just going to put the crewman counters. And then this is the top side and an interior. And uh, I think Bruce, again, did a great job on this. Okay, now let's go to the next one. This is the 5B, Project 5B. And um, again, I think it turned out just really good. Uh, Bruce did an excellent job. And um, both boats are, are fun, like I said, and they each offer a different playing experience. So, and then all, one thing I forgot to mention is, while the S100 has torpedoes, the, the Trogflugel actually has rockets, large rockets, and these are very devastating um, to British shipping if you can uh, get in close enough to hit them. So here we have the damage logs for the T-boat, the Trogflugel boat, which says T-boat number one. And number two to four and then this is uh, got a clear coat kind of like laminated and you're going to just use the light uh, the dry erase marker you're going to mark off the damage whenever you hit it and whenever it gets hit and then we have superficial hits down here and um, when you're done you're going to just wipe it clean and you can reuse it which is nice it's one-sided okay and then somehow these got this has got a little bit mixed up. Okay, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Um, okay, I'll just do these afterwards. I'll go ahead and do these first. Okay. And then now, let me put these back here. Okay. Now these are also um, clear coat, and then this is the enemy uh, convoy ship status. So each ship is um, going to be uh, the damage type of damage systems are flooding is going to be checked off and it's very easy to track and um, this is also the um, enemy aircraft and warship uh, card and um, these are MTBs these are British uh, gunboats and torpedo boats and of course destroyers trawlers and even a light cruiser, which you might sometimes encounter, British light cruiser. And here we have the squadron st status for the, the boats. This is the, I believe, let's see, there are a lot of cards in here. Yeah, okay, this is for the, yeah, this is for the S100. And you have a total of six, you have four boats. You start out with six and you'll, you'll have two reserves and if you start to lose boats then you're gonna have to wait for replacements and you go have, you have like replacement dates and everything you can write in and uh, it's very simple and this has also got a clear coat you can use the whiteboard I have the dry erase marker so let's see if we got our uh, other ones here. I think I got them a little bit, got them a little mixed up here, the order. Yeah, let's see here. Okay, that's all right. Okay, um, this is the, uh, okay, that was just one-sided. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is uh, the S100 damage log, and it's the same as the other one I just showed you. And it's uh, also laminated, of course, and you use the dry erase marker. So now these are the combat combat mats, the combat boards, and this is where you're going to conduct uh, combat, ship to ship combat, and even aircraft. Um, and then you put the enemy ships here, merchant ships and warships, and then each card has a weather condition. Um, Devil boats had just one mat, and then you had to, um, you know, you had to know which which weather condition it was and calculate. But this one, I changed it. I wanted to have each uh, zone limited to the weather condition. Like bad weather only has one, foggy only has one. But then when we get to poor weather. We have two, 
and in good weather we have three. So I felt that was uh, that was better to have separate mats for that instead of having to remember how many uh, zones you had to you were limited to. Okay, and in here we have the counters, and I again I think they turn out very nicely. They're nice and thick and they're rounded. And uh, again, Bruce did a great job. This is the back side. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. And we have all the boats down here. Okay. And then this is the second counter sheet. And we have more boats. We have the different skill levels the red and the blue and green and. Uh, orange each representing the different and there's a few blanks which is nice uh, you can use it to do custom counters or whatever and that's the back side and we have the crews crew members okay and then here we have the campaign log sheets and this is where you're going to record your uh, missions now this is um, Let's see here. These are mixed up here. Okay, yeah. Okay, so um, you're going to basically record how many mines were laid, how many enemies killed, or friendly losses, uh, mission number, date, uh, type of mission, and stuff like that. So there's quite a few. These are, uh, how many are in here? There's maybe 50, 50 sheets. So you can photocopy those and use your, uh, continue to use them. And then this is the S boat number one crewman status. And you record, you can record the names and the start date, end date, and then how many kills each crew member has. This is for S boat number one. Um, number two to four do not track individual crew members. I did that for uh, reasons of playability. It would have just been too much to track everything for four different boats so I had to abstract number two to four boats but I think it turned out very well and then on the back side we have the uh, this is for the S100 on the back side we have the uh, Trog Flugo also because each crew member is a little bit different compared to the other boat so and then here you have the medals you can record the medals if you have to put the game away and then you can play it again later Okay, and then here, lastly, we have the S boats, uh, or snow boats, number two to four crew status sheet. And then you can record, you know, their skill level. And so there is a little bit of detail for the other boats, but number one has the most, boat number one has the most detail. But you can also track their skill level. They increase their skill. Um, like for every five enemy kills, they increase the uh, crew skill level by one. Or for every 15 su successful missions, the crew skill increases by one level. So they can also increase their skill. Uh, just it's not quite as detailed as boat number one. So and then that's that. And I think that's just about everything. So I wanted to... Just show everybody that that uh, what what the game components look like, and I think it turned out very nicely. And um, I hope uh, once you uh, receive your game that you enjoy it. A lot of uh, hard work went into this game, and um, and I want to say thanks to Compass and everybody that helped make this game possible. Thank you for watching.